Hi, everybody, and thanks for tuning in, and welcome to episode 99 of the Run the Hills podcast, sponsored by Cheer Charge. Cheer Charge have been fueling adventures with real food made with real ingredients since 2012. Go and check them out at www.cheercharge.co.uk. How are you doing, Eddie? I, you know, I love our little, um, it's Wednesday, isn't it, actually, but I usually love our little weekly uh, catch-ups. We're not we're not needy friends, you know, we're literally, <laughs> we're quite arm's length during the week and then. <laughs> well, you, sometimes, you sometimes complain that I ghost you because I don't reply to a WhatsApp <laughs> for a few days, but I think all my friends would say that about WhatsApps because you get WhatsApps at the most inappropriate per- moment when you're like wiping poo off one child's bum yeah. you know finding the swimming goggles for the other child the other child is out somewhere and then you're like what's up can you do a recording on the august the 17th you're like <laughs> yes later i'll reply later yeah yeah so sometimes you have to sit down don't you and do your whatsapp admin and oh, you go through and you're like reply okay I haven't planned. Oh, shit. yeah yeah that's really important because um you know especially with like they say the facebook um people take the time to tag you in and comment on a say a post that we've done yeah really. i do the same i really appreciate it. i love that i love the tagging and the comments but again i have to go right run to the hills facebook admin let's catch up on all of that always gets catched up on but yeah i feel like we don't need to be you know we don't need to every day i like that loving. we just jump in <laughs> And but we could we could pretty happily be uh, have our Zoom connected for most of the day and just potter around. Yeah, just potter around, yeah. <laughs> you're right, you're right. I've all got clingy friends, and you're not a clingy friend. It's good. No, I do, I think my friends would say that about me as well. That, that I can be pretty like um, pretty happy on my own as well. Pretty happy yeah. in my own company. I don't need don't need people. As long as I've got my fam around me, I'm all right. Yeah. Right. I think it's a good trait for an endurance athlete as well as the ability to be by yourself for a long time. Yeah, you've got to enjoy your own company. <laughs> got to enjoy your own company. I questioned my own company at six o'clock this morning. I can't change the alarm on my iPhone. And it used to be this bird tweeting. It used to just right. wake me up gently. Because yeah, yeah. I have it under my pillow. I know this is probably really bad for Wi-Fi, oh, but really? then it's like, like, <laughs> not really bad. Your <laughs> <laughs> Does that explain? <laughs> A lot of stuff, but the, it's so that when my alarm goes off, that um, it doesn't wake everyone up. I can just like sort of hear it under the pillow. Yeah. Um, but it, it's now this like, oh, that's quite aggressive, isn't it? It's such an aggressive six o'clock wake up, and so I'm trying to find it. I'm like, Shut up. <laughs> and then creep downstairs to get out. And I'm not good. I'm not good. I have to go out running at the moment between half five and half six basically to get wow, yeah i'm not good at that i'm not nice I, wasn't it super quiet i mean once you're out it's absolutely fine it's, yeah. isn't it it's just the getting up the i try i'd like to have a cup of tea but if lindy hears me putting the kettle on she starts a, <laughs> <laughs> they know <laughs> they know she's like mm, don't go without me don't go without me i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready <laughs> and then so i try and get all ready because the minute i open the back door where they live i cannot even like putting my trainers on she's like i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait we gotta go we gotta go I love, I love um, dogs. <laughs> so and she's so and Taki's like i could take it or leave it really yeah. mom I mean, are we Whatever. going not. but this morning it's we've had like you super hot weather but we don't france just doesn't whine about it and gets on i'm shiny look how shiny i am <laughs> yeah well i'm feeling quite shiny just jogging along it was just like i'm just gonna do like a you know 90 minute nice easy jog i was doing a lovely thing running dip my mate lives 10k down the valley and she um so i we would go we'll both leave our houses and we'll run and we'll meet and then she was going to run back up with me and then turn around so we were I was laughing because I was like I don't think I think we're gonna get like 20 minutes of actual running together but yeah. it's a good it was a good motivator to know that we're both going out we yeah. got lapped, both leaving and then we were going to meet wherever we met on the trail which was oh, fun. I like that yeah uh, and uh add a little quick <laughs> and then she said then he's bad and then he's like he didn't do that yet to do that and then he did that and then he did that and then we stopped where she was going to turn around and then carried on chatting this is such a woman thing for like another 20 minutes as we yeah. stood there. <laughs> And they did it. And Bryn messaged me going, Are you are you almost home? Because you I've got a I've got a job. Yeah, where you're at. 
And I was like, oh yeah, oh God, better get out. Um, anyway, I've been doing lots of easy, easy. Achilles is feeling so much better. Awesome. Very much. I've gone into the old Hoka Challengers. Back classic shoe. Absolute classic. Super, the grip is horrendous for anyone that yeah. wears them. I did wear them for a hundred. Um, for the comfort, I mean, the grip was horrendous, but I was like, do you need grip in a hundred? You just... You always go so slow down yeah, stuff. That's true. That's You're true. Fine. You're fine. Um, and uh, so the but the comfort factor so comfy. So they are falling apart. But I've gone back into that and I've done <laughs> Gary. I've done a full two days base training for the spine. I'm pretty much done. You're there. Yeah. Much training done. Taper time. So taper time. So I've got back on my bike. That wasn't as emotional as I thought. I had two weeks almost off the bike. I thought it's not going to go. Do you have to reharden the rear? We don't need to talk. I think we can just <laughs> gloss over that one now. We've all heard enough of that, but it was all absolutely fine. So I got back on the bike. I've been um, catching up. I don't know about you, but well, you will. You haven't done Swift for like three hundred years, but mm -hmm. I love watching people's. Uh, triathletes YouTube videos when I'm on my bike because it sort of inspires me. Anybody that watches YouTube stuff and likes watching it, I'll give a shout out. They did um, they did a sub eight and sub seven project to try and do like the fastest Ironman ever, okay. and they did took out lots of variables. They've released a documentary on YouTube. It's an hour long, so if you've got to sit on a what is the fastest Ironman? Right? Another well, this was very much, this was like, uh, you were allowed to draft, so they got like the fastest swimmers in and the fastest bikers. Um, uh, so the men did it in under, well, I don't want to spoil it, watch the documentary. Okay, sorry. Um, but it's really, really good. So if you've got, uh, even if you're not a triathlete, like it's really watching these athletes perform and how they did it, it's a really good story. So it makes the, I have to watch something if I'm just basing, but yeah. not working out, it's a long time, isn't it? Anyway, feel back on it. I am taking everything really slow because, again, I think that's a fault of mine is I come back and I go too fast. Two so feet I'm, in. <laughs> two feet in. So I'm being really mindful of, like, I need a month of let's just get the volume up nice, easy, so that I can do it day after day after day. It's great. Um, restrain that, Eddie. I love it. I know. This is Eddie. This is Eddie 3.5 times a million recreated, but I actually really like just jogging around, jogging around. And you can then, yeah, you can do it loads. So feeling quite good. Yeah, just did almost nine miles. Nice, nice and easy. But I mean, three weeks ago, I couldn't have done that. I was struggling to yeah. do three miles. So fingers crossed, all going in the right direction. I'm not, I was thinking of doing that little race this weekend. I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to. Uh, I'm going to go out for another long run. Oh, I did a lovely long run. I was so lucky around here that I have so many lovely trails. I almost don't then go any further okay. because I love all my trails. I know where I am. I know the distance, the time. It's super easy. But we, I downloaded a Strava map from, I saw someone else did it. <laughs> And I thought it'd be good practice for spine to follow a map where I don't know where I'm going, follow my arrow. Great idea. Oh, my GPX. So we went, so I drove, which I, I don't really like doing. I always feel if I have to drive to a run, it's sort of negating. Anyway, drove, it's only 5K drive. I could have probably run there and run back. <laughs> yeah. This is Eddie 3.5, so don't add extra stuff. Do the session. Good Met idea. some mates and it's, it's only 5K away, but we went up up a hill and over into a whole new valley that I've never been to, a whole new vista of mountains. The most beautiful run, I think it's up there, my top three, Gary, company and oh, running. Yeah. Just, oh, it was so beautiful. Alpine meadows with like- I have to go on Strava and have a look at that one. Look, I did I put it on Strava, I'm not sure. Alpine meadows, single track, smooth, oh, like carving around the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> only fell on my ass like twice had one mo moment crossing which cross a river and there were like the stepping stones yeah. and i forgot that the achilles couldn't really take my whole weight that was a bit scary steep descending is still i have to like ski um ski turn it down because i can't go straight down on the achilles that's a bit a little bit too sore so i have to like turn left all the way down turn right but anyway huge progress lovely run feel positive about my running and my general slow fitness i call it when you're not fast fit but you're getting slow fit so generally positive and generally managing to fit everything in with summer holidays 
which is just what I do is I write in my diary. I'll stop talking about myself in a second. I write in my diary um, what I'm going to do that day, like, and where I'm going to fit it in. That is how, like, and if it doesn't fit in that slot, I just have to do it in that slot. It's so hard sometimes when you come back and I'm like, okay, kids are back, kids are back. Okay, you need your tea, right. Mum's going to go, okay, 45 minute bike. And you're like, Can I, if I sit down, have a cup of tea, can't even do that because I'll yeah. miss the session. The level of commitment has to be full but on. It's Lisa, well, if I'm getting in and I'm stop procrastinating, she's so just like, yeah. do your goddamn slot, strength exercises. Your slot <laughs> is going. Your slot is yeah. disappearing. <laughs> but I also think as well, that's a really good training. Like that, that dedication that little bit of extra dedication that you need to get it done when you're really busy is yeah. also really all little building blocks of how much you want it, how much you want it, how much you're going to give it. And that sort of mental focus is needed. Done. Done. Eddie done 3.5. What about you? You've done some nice stuff too. Oh, you've been on a lovely run. It was it's quite a, in the whole scheme of the Lake 100. It was quite a simple section from the Blencathra Centre, basically to Dockra out and back. And we did that with Neil and Lisa, who were both doing the 100. First time 100 for Lisa and uh, Lisa's brother Ant came along too. So that was nice. Yeah, about 15 miles, not a huge elevation. Is this your wife, Gary, is doing Lake 100? No, 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 Neil's wife, sorry. Oh, oh. everybody I know is called Billy. Oh, everyone's wife's a, a, a Lisa. It's really strange. Like, why has this never been mentioned before that your wife is also trying to do it? You've just ignored that fact. She's nothing. <laughs> okay. Right. No, it's all about me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's Neil's wife, uh, Lisa, but I was totally disoriented. Um, I got my blend cathars and my um, club heads back to front. I was all, because I just, it was the same spot. So when you do the bogging round, you come from Thrill Kells and then you go up to Clough Head. And there's a very small section which you replicate on the Lakeland 100 route. But it totally bamboozled me coming out from a different section. I didn't... Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know where I was for about, te- for about 10 minutes. But, yeah, it's a really good section. It's quite runnable, I think, about 2,000 feet, uh, out and back 2,500 feet, so over 15 miles. It's not too bad. But, yeah, just great. I think everybody, the pace was um, fine. You know, I'm just really nervous about this. Can I sustain the Lake 100 pace? So because it was a group, you were going as fast as the group, so my effort was lower than what it would be on the day. But even still, I was faster than 100 24 hour pace um which i think was awesome for everybody you know say elisa for example um i'm not too sure what her goal aspirations are but to be moving at that speed i think might be a good confidence builder for her uh and yeah so that was awesome but it was on the, it's always i do get anxious on the if i can replicate this on the day but every time and you know this you, you do these big weekends although that wasn't a big run but it's always on the back of a, a, a training week you know i did six times a kilometer on thursday which was a, a really super hard session and then i went down to sedgefield and did my threshold run i was saying i was going to do a park run which is awesome so i had so the saturday was this 20 minute threshold run then sunday we went off the lake so we did two kind of quality sessions albeit the threshold run wasn't a massive threshold minute run at 20 minutes and then you do your eckies and um you think oh i'm a little bit tired or this and that and that's not how it's going to be on the on the day because you won't have done six times one k in Castle Eden Dean is a uh, everybody is rinsed after after that session. It's a great session. I pay I pay I to pay my fun flights just to come over to do that session. <laughs> you could you'd probably leave us off with dust. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Neil and I, five zero. No, not right now. Give me another. Give me another month. Neil and I are on our prescription asthma pumps trying to get us <laughs> trying to get us round. <laughs> It's okay, we were allowed these, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. performance, um, medicals, <laughs> they, they, all the cyclists are asthmatic, aren't they? <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, it was great. And, you know, the park run, I forgot, I don't do many park runs, but it was awesome, especially Sedgefield, because <clears throat> being a Sedgefield Harrier, that's my kind of home uh, running club, and to see loads of friends who I don't see as often as I should. So that was a really good social few hours over at Sedgefield. A couple of, I had about five coffees on Saturday. I was high as a kite. It was absolutely... Five <laughs> coffees. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I... Uh, I didn't have any toilet disasters like the week before so that was good who'd have thought that little bit of poo chat was so popular with our community <laughs> so yeah no no tummy troubles there but I, yeah also on the recce so i had no no caffeinated drinks and i had uh chia charge active route i was drinking my calories too actually on the on, on the recce so that was good so yeah a lot of reducing the amount of kind of heavy calories and topping up with with uh drink calories too so that was awesome uh 
Yes, I love the park run. Love the recce. Went to see Thor. Oh, Eddie. I saw the advert for Thor and it was a bit scary, Gary. Well, it was funny. It was really funny. Well, Christian Bale, he's quite a heavy, heavy actor, isn't it? So he, he was good. But yeah, five stars. 100% recommend it. I laughed. I cried. Uh, yeah, whole shebang. For, for, and it wasn't like three hours long. I think it was about two hours long. So I right. could take that. And I really am now... Like everybody probably else, I'm starting to get those race nerves where I'm overanalyzing things, what little bits of final kit, the nutrition, how I'm going to, uh, the admin for the nutrition, the whole polls. My goodness me, I'm swamped with poll um, thoughts at the moment. So yeah, the whole pace and everything, can I sustain it? I'm kind of becoming a bit overwhelmed with that. But I know as soon to. as you're on the start line, it'll go on. It'll be mm -hmm. going. It's all going to go. But trust the process, believe the training. Should we talk about people who have been actually racing and not just thinking about racing? What do we got? Well, we had Hard Rock. I watched a little bit, followed a little bit, but it was kind of through our night, wasn't it? Kylian Jeunet and Francis Duan just looked like they're sort of um, out for a little uh, stroll. Saw them walking up a track. They were always apart when I saw them. They were never. Yeah, together. I was curious how it panned out the race. Um, I wonder how that panned out. But Kylian Jeunet won with a new course record, and Courtney De Walter wasn't that fast behind. Even though she said she had a bit of a rough day, she managed to pull it back and uh, take the new women's course record as well. And I know Kylian is now going off to UTMB. I can't believe the the resilience these guys have got. I know they'd live different lives to us, but still, wow. Uh, I don't know if Courtney's going to do UTMB this year. Um, somebody will know as well. We all, uh, much like Hard Rock as well, we had Wendover Woods 50K down in the southeast of England. Matt Hamilton won it in four hours 27, and Susie Watmore in five hours 38. And I had a few friends doing it, very hot. Even though it's run, it starts at 11 o'clock at night and it runs through the night, um, lots of climbing, about 1,800 metres of climbing in it, but awesome. still really, really hot. So well done to everybody that, um, that did that race. What have you got, Gary? Yeah, Dale's run a 30. I saw some great pictures on their social media. And if it's, I imagine it will be, it's kind of same area of the country as the Swaledale Marathon. And that was a really lovely place to run. But uh, yeah, it looked awesome. So go and check out the Dale's Runners uh, people over on the internet. But yeah, Keith Wigley took the win, two hours, 33 and 15 minutes. And Heather Tufts, first lady, uh, three hours, nine minutes and 57 seconds. Well done. Totally indulged myself this week, Eddie. I've been... It's one of the perks of this job. <laughs> when, <laughs> oh, I'm really stressed out and thinking about uh, polls for a big upcoming race. I know I'll do. We'll reach out to someone from Lecky, <laughs> get them on the podcast. Um, I have to point out, again, I always feel super sensitive. This is not a sponsored show. I'm, Eddie, you're like Lecky. Well, we try one. as hard as we can. Nobody wants <laughs> Well, you've been propping up Lecky, I think, looking at your poor. I even showed um, him my bucket. I showed him my Lecky bucket. That is not a euphemism for anything <laughs> else. But uh, <laughs> I don't is that a new Netflix and chill. I have been I'm still not over there. Um, I I have been using Lecky products since we moved to the Alps. We use them. The kids use them for skiing, and they have a different pole for every freaking ski turn that they do. Um, I use them for skiing. I use them for my ski touring training, and I also use them for my trail. So it was quite good. It's quite good, isn't it? Because I've I've used them for a long time and I really rate the product and I rate their ski gloves. And now I know all about their trail running gloves. But perhaps yeah. we shouldn't share too much. It's a very relaxed chat. And it's um if you don't use poles, you will definitely want to use poles, I reckon, after this. Um and James was um, yeah, I reckon you could you could give James a shout if you ever wanted any advice about poles. He would, he's the guy. But it's not sponsored, sure. But it's not. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Today we've been joined by James Moorcroft from Lecky. Awesome. Thanks for coming on the show today, James. We ask all our guests this. Uh, where are you? What's the view from your window? I'm not too sure where that's going to go. Looking at your uh, the backdrop, and have you been for a run today? Uh, I am in our office just outside Kendall uh, near Sizer. The view is some nice hills and fields of sheep, mostly. Uh, oh, the sheep nice. 
most of them appear to be eating ice creams and under parasols because it's, I think it was 34 degrees when I came in this morning, which is a bit mad. Can you imagine and, uh, being a sheep, a Lake District sheep in this? Mm-hmm. You'd be so confused. <laughs> what is going on with my life? <laughs> And I haven't been for Wednesday. I did a little bit of mobility this morning, but uh, in this heat, there was no chance I was going out. I'm hiding. You're hiding. Now, you were a bit nervous because you were like, don't ask me about my running. Don't ask me about my running. So tell us a little bit about maybe your background, how you got into this, the polling game we can see behind you. Um, was it through sort of like athletic endeavours or is it something more work-based? I've always been very outdoorsy, so uh, the outdoors was really my background. Um, I've, I've done a lot of climbing, um, I have done some running, a lot of trekking, skiing, you know, a bit of everything. Um, I, I just kind of like being outside, so I got into the outdoor industry, as it were, via that route. Um, I've worked for a few brands, and then I've been working for Lucky for just over a year now. Um, and so with moving into a industry that has a bit more of a running focus, uh, I started to get myself into running a little bit more. I'm not a runner, okay? I'm not built for running, which is why, for me, this is uh, this is not really the uh, uh, an industry I know that well, a part of sport I know that well, but I've uh, I've given it a go and I've I've really enjoyed it. I still love my fitness, and so I still do get out, but it's uh, yeah, it's more casual than perhaps some of your other guests. I feel slightly out of my depth. No, no. you crossfit you enjoy crossfit is that correct i've just got into that six months ago and that's yeah. um yeah that's a level of fitness and activity that i'd never realized that anyone could really do so uh yeah that's kind of opened a whole new a whole new world for me is there a big crossfit scene in kendall the farmers there with the well so i actually live over in the northeast i've come over here especially state to make sure that you can get a nice uh, oh look at that I know, Love. that's commitment to the cause, isn't it? But yeah, the CrossFit, the CrossFit family is a is a fantastic family. Really, really supportive. Everything from your top level athletes who what they can do is just ridiculous, all the way down to kind of, you know, numpties like me who come in and uh, just enjoy beating ourselves up most evenings. So we get back on uh, back on track to start talking about Lecky again. Yeah, I'm really interested. I, I didn't think it was very apparent on Friday. My knowledge of uh, running poles and Lecky as a brand is quite minimal. Could uh-huh. you share with me? I'd, I'd love to know a bit more. But and also our listeners, um, a bit about Lecky's history uh, in 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 the sport. Yeah, absolutely. So Lecky goes back a long way. So they were first making um, ski poles and trekking poles back in the early '60s. Um, they've they've been known for putting together probably the best poles in the business for a really long time, working with people like Reinhold Messner, um, working with obviously almost all of the best skiers in the industry now use Lecky poles. Um, And of course, we've seen that start to move into the trail running scene uh, over the past number of years. Um, And now we are in a very lucky position, a very fortunate position, where quite a few of the best runners in the world are using our product. which is quite nice because it does make me selling it to runners and selling it to shops very easy because when they're getting results that they're getting with the help of the products here behind me, yeah, um, people notice that, you know? Um, and when you've used a set of Lecky poles for the first time, you do understand why Lecky is what Lecky is. So they've got a couple of re- real key things that they aim for every year they want to have a new development come out so there's always something new and because they only make poles and then the gloves that go with the poles for your ski gloves and bits and bobs like that it means that all of their money that they can put into r&d goes back into poles and back into that ecosystem okay so the level of investment in that and the level of technology the quality of the materials bits and pieces like that um it's kind of second to none and so that's why we're getting that buy-in from athletes i'm very very new to polls it's it's it seems to all happened eddie maybe in about a six-week period i've gone from never using them to <laughs> thinking about it to scratch now it you have an opinion on them you're one of those people <laughs> i've never used them now i have an opinion and i've pretty much got my youtube video out and i'm <laughs> <laughs> well now i'm literally about to run 100 miles with with these polls which i've got to say i'm probably pretty inexperienced but why would someone like me or our listeners why would they yeah why would they 
possibly use polls? So there's a number of reasons, really. Um, when you're talking about using polls as well, Gary, of course, you are the prime example of what everyone should be doing just for a race, which is pick up a new piece of kit and head straight to the race with your new piece of kit. I, did, <laughs> I, I will say, I don't want to kind of uh, humble brag, it's not even a humble brag, but I did come second in a race that I used polls. You did, but... which is, <laughs> that's exactly it. Like, and that's, that's the point. You pick up a set of these things, you get it just about right. and they Gary, will make... you're fully sponsored already. Look, I pick these up, man. I just picked them up and I was second. I did no training. <laughs> Like <laughs> yeah, that's it. Guaranteed success. I drank this shake and I picked up my polls and hashtag ad. <laughs> they are um, they're a bit of a game changer, really, polls. Everyone's had that experience, haven't they, where your wheels have come off in a race. Everyone's had that experience where yeah. perhaps the elevation's been a little bit more than you're anticipating or for some reason you've not kept up the admin quite right and your legs just give out. And, well, Using a set of poles, it engages a whole series of other muscle groups in your body. And so over any extended distances, your legs then aren't taking as much of a beating as they were. Doing. When, when I'm doing training in shops and bits and bobs like that with the staff, to try and, try and get the staff on board, I always take a set of scales with me. Um, and it's not, oh, no, where's this going? <laughs> it's not because I'm an awful person, okay? I don't like to go in and just shame people. What did you have for breakfast? And stick them down. <laughs> What I what I'm trying to get them to do is just have a uh, have a stand on the scales and just remember what the weight says. I'm not going to look. No one in here is going to look. Okay, now take this set of poles, do it again, and push through the poles as though you're going uphill and you're giving it a decent crack. Um, most people are hitting between 10 and 20 kilos off those scales as soon as they start to push down. Yeah. Um, so it is the fastest Weight Watchers diet. Out there. It's carry the ground with. So when I go to a party tonight and I'm taking the pole with <laughs> yeah, a nice outfit, just... people be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> Do you take scales with you though? Because it's oh, a really weird party. Yeah, that would be <laughs> I've done it. I've got you know after we chatted on um, oh, yeah, Friday, Gary. I was on the scales, <laughs> and even without really applying force, just kind of resting us, but resting there, yeah. taking the weight of your arms. It was a few pounds, just immediately, without even any yeah. application of force. So yeah, definitely confirm that. So that then sort of feeds into something we talk about, which is um, which is perceived effort. And perceived effort's a weird thing because nobody really talks about perceived effort. Perceived effort's kind of this strange thing that Lecky maybe made up um, <laughs> so that I can, then <laughs> I can then explain this. But the idea being that... Um, whilst using your poles you are probably putting a little bit more effort into that rub because you've engaged this whole muscle group up here you've started pushing down on every step but your perceived effort how you feel at the end of that race and 20 miles 30 miles 100 miles is going to be lessened your legs are going to feel better you are probably going to have gone a little bit quicker as well um using the poles will open up your stride length so and this does take practice um, yeah I, I would. Uh, I need to put a little caveat in here. All of this takes a lot of practice. You're not going to go out on your first first time with poles and go, "This feels completely natural." I I wonder why I have never used four legs before. Um, yeah. But as you practice, as you get more used to it, your your stride length will increase. Your cadence is probably going to slow down ever so slightly, and so you are going to go a little bit quicker over those distances, which of course is then linked back into. Well, if you've got fresher legs 30 yeah. miles into a race, of course you're going to go a little bit quicker. The final key point of why you would choose to use poles in a race, you have a 5% reduction in foot pressure. But obviously, your feet take so much care. Like, they take such a battering as you're going over these distances and over rough terrain. Well, just taking that 5% out over an extended period of time is enormous. I have a, um, a little stat, which I don't know how official it is, but we've kind of done the maths. So if anyone from Lecky is actually watching this, I am sorry. <laughs> um, but we, we've worked out that it's roughly over a 10-mile period, on average, two tonnes out of your legs and feet. Can you and imagine that? So you're doing... Uh, I'll always turn it back to the Lake and 100, any conversation I've got now. We've moved on to the Bob Graham. We've got, we've got the Lake and 100. <laughs> but it's 20 tonnes. You know, on, on average, you know, obviously everyone is different. Everyone has slightly different mechanics. But if you can get somewhere... Craig, even half of that 
I would uh, I would think I would uh, we'll see two weeks time if I'll reap the rewards <laughs> of, of, of that reduced uh, tonnage. It's quite staggering. So yeah, potentially twenty tons over a hundred mile race is. Um, that's and you're going to notice it. You're definitely going to notice it, especially someone my sort of weight. I'm I am ninety six kilos. I think I weighed myself the other day, which is yeah. um, you know it's creeping on up there. But I will notice that over that period if I can engage muscles that take weight from my legs yeah. it just makes a massive difference and I've, I've done it like i'm i very rarely go out for a run these days without my poles which maybe is cheating on every single run i do if you, also, if you mentioned you're... like the perceived effort eddie and i chatted um a few weeks ago maybe about this like low aerobic pace that maybe for a hundred mile race i'm figuring i've got uh reserve in the tank aerobically um so that's my master plan. I think plan. that's How... from efficiency as well, Gary, is that you're not, your whole body isn't used to working like that going uphill. And so it's working yeah. slightly harder going, oh, hang on a second, I'm having to put the, the blood around my upper half as well yeah. now. Yeah. Whereas the more that you practice it, it will just be like, okay, we're switching into polling mode now. What I thought was really good, some of the safe was a steeper hill. Um, and I just didn't have the energy in the legs maybe to push, but I really had the the energy and force in my arms to kind of take up that load and it really did propel you up the hill faster so yeah it's quite it's super interesting how shoulders and back we, we like to talk about shoulders and back um i know you i know we've had conversations gary about keeping those arms nice and straight when we've been out <laughs> but when you're talking about arms what what we try to get people doing is just keeping the arms a little bit straighter closer to where you would be in a ski position because actually the muscle groups up here and down your back are just much larger so you know that, that, that's i want to keep that i there. always i do that as well i'm like you've got to make the box make the box in front of you and mm -hmm. then go through the box because if you just make a little patch in front of you you're not actually using those big back muscles which is no. what you want to be taking over the load and, yeah. the, and the shoulders and the front of the shoulder but if you make the box enough that or a bubble enough of you and then you just push through it that's the simplest tip that i always say to people they say this is the same tip i do when people are scared of heights and ridges i'm like just make your box and all you think about is the box around you don't think about the 2000 meter drop either side <laughs> but it's the same with the polling is make your box and you might make the box a different size according to the steepness of the terrain yeah uh, but just make sure you've got that gap and it's a good way also of effort level is that if you if you make the small if you make two smaller bots, you're actually using your legs more to push through, and you're almost falling out of the the effort of the polling. Whereas if you make it just the right size, the legs can keep that effort, the same effort all the way through. If you make it too big, you lose it because you lost it out the window, basically. Yeah. That's my completely. Um, oh, um, I like it. I like it. That's how. Yeah, that's how. I, what I've learned, and I've used poles now for seven years in all my sports and but i think it's taken me about and i think people should be aware of this if they everybody should have i think should have poles in their lives for some point um for um for for any sort of terrain which is hilly or technical or multi-days there is a there's a time in your journey as an ultra runner where polling is going to be the right thing for you but as gary sort of alluded you've got to um work at it and it takes time to build up the muscles and to build up the technique even though there isn't like there's not like it's not really tricky technique it's more just to sort of learn skill it's a bit like what swimming golf you know learning that technique until it just becomes now i just put the poles don't even think about it well it's, just... it's learning the technique the thing is when you've been running generally you've you've spent hours hundreds of hours yeah. absolutely yeah. refining your cadence absolutely refining the way you run over certain terrain having poles is going to throw that slightly out of whack yeah. Mm. because it, it does change your cadence ever so slightly so yeah you need to be prepared to uh just rethink ever so slightly the way you're doing things and as yeah just practice 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 you'll get that everyone gets that and when you do you, you get all of those benefits we've just spoken about as a runner i i kind of snip out tags in race vests and stuff like that to get everything lighter but we chatted about this on friday with poles necessarily it's not always the lightest pole is the best how would you advise somebody you know i'm, I'm quite a small frame guy but somebody could be six foot five would we both rush for the lightest poles or would you advise maybe a different type of pole for some of the bigger frame yeah so there are certain things to think about um there are certain things to think about and i've got a really nice selection of poles just here behind me these ones i prepared earlier um 
and this is the new range for 2022. So this is all the stuff that's out at the moment. Um, there are there are different things to think about. You, you want to think about firstly how tall and heavy are you? How much load are you going to be putting through those poles? Because for someone like myself, as I say, at 96 kilos, I'm about six foot. If I'm using this super light, which is very very thin, um, really lightweight pole, there's going to be quite a lot of flex in that, and with carbon, carbon can snap. Okay. Um, however, am I going to be getting the benefit by going as lightweight as possible? Whereas if I add about 13 grams on, I then go on to something a little bit chunkier, and you can see mm. the difference between those. So there's probably about a two millimeter difference yeah. around the actual shaft itself. That is going to make a massive difference in terms of the amount of load I can put through the pole. So first thing to think about is um, kind of how much load you put into that pole if you are someone who's going to be really cranking down on them i'd probably look for something um like this which is the ultra trail fx1 um and that's going to take a little bit more punishment however gary for yourself when you are slightly smaller frame than me you know <laughs> you're perhaps going to be looking at the ultra trail fx1 super light which okay. is more perhaps performance focused um in terms of just the way it's put together, you, you remove as much as possible, you know, to go as light and as fast as you can. Yeah. I have a lot of other things that I could lose before I started needing to shave that many grams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I noticed on some of those poles, the grip were longer on some of them and some of them are short. Is there a reason why that would be the case? So, yes, uh, there's a bit of functionality difference in the grip itself. So, Sorry. let me just take the straps off so you can see these. So a little bit of functionality difference in the grip itself. So you can see on here, we've got one with a slightly shorter grip and one with an extended foam grip. Uh, and yeah. these are all foam, by the way. None of the cork, they've been printed to look like cork. Foam is, uh, foam is more thermodynamically um, appropriate for running. It allows you to wick sweat away a bit, a bit easier. Are they not actually cork? <laughs> not actually cork. I know, I thought I was literally about a foot away from this. It used to be cork. So, I've been using mine for years. Oh, yeah, so um, I'm sure, Eddie, that yours will have been cork, but this year, everything... Oh, oh this year, cork. okay. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I really don't... It's cork. Cool. Have a look at them, because um, if you've got a cork... I'm going to go and get mine now. Cork. You keep talking. I'm going to go... Okay, I'm pretty convincing. Cool. I think I was about a foot away from it on Friday, and I still thought it was cork. It was... Yeah. Um, no, no, it's, it's, a, it's a good print. It looks really good. <laughs> um, but so the extended grip itself is if you're going over uh, difficult terrain, going over technical terrain, something steep or yeah. some sort of traverse, it gives you different places in which you can actually place your hand on the grip. Yeah. Um, and it's super easy. Like you just clipped out there, what, in a couple of seconds? And then you're, yeah. you're ready to go in a, in a different grip. That's That's the thing really where we're seeing we're seeing the records kind of tumble. I mean, Courtney Dewalter got her nice uh, record the other day for us, didn't she? So that's, that's right, yes. all over our social media. So we are seeing these these athletes just smash records. We're seeing them do fantastic things. And of course, it's down to the athlete. It's completely down to the athlete. Yeah. But we get to say that it's something to do with us. You know, well, it, you know, I wouldn't um, kind of play yourself down too much. Any 100-mile race, you know, lots of the longer it goes, the, there's more variance. And one thing which is super important is like m managing yourself. And if something that you have to do, like eat, you're not doing as much because your poles are a nightmare to get on and off and get to your nutrition. Yeah. Then yeah, I, I wouldn't um, underestimate how much that's played in the race. Yeah. So this is what, what we're talking about here is the trail shark system. So for those of you who are watching, you can see that I've got this strap on my hand. Um, for listeners, it's like a mesh strap that sits on your hand for the whole race. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen these at races, people wearing these like black or gray with like a luminous um, outside strap that just sits on their hand the whole race. The idea being that this is something that just stays on and allows you to very quickly with a little loop in between your thumb and, thumb and your forefinger, clip in and out of your pole as fast as, as fast as you can imagine, rather than feeding your hand through a strap and then putting the weight through there. Yeah. The other benefits of having the um, the shark grip, the the grip itself, the strap, is it spreads the load further over the hand. So, you know, over doing these distances, blisters are obviously a massive issue. Fatigue yeah. in your hand is a massive issue if you're hanging onto a set of poles that whole time. 
So if you can spread that load, if you can make it more comfortable, and if you can allow your hands to stay more relaxed as you're pushing through and putting that power through the pole, that's going to massively improve your performance. And again, it's that perceived um, perceived intensity. It's the it's it's just your enjoyment on the day. Yeah. You don't want these things to be causing you any sort of nuisance. So the last thing you yeah. want is a is a, a blister on your hand. <laughs> your man. Maybe on your feet. You know, it's bad enough on your feet, but then it's like, yeah. oh, bloody hell, I've got a blister on my hand now because these. No. <laughs> I know you, you spent money on poles and then you've got blisters all over your hands because of them. Yeah. You wouldn't be too happy with it. So I have a bone to pick with Lucky about those gloves, though. Um, that what when you've got to, so I'm going to be doing the spine in um, next winter, which is the pen I'm wearing in the middle of winter, and yeah. I'll be taking my trusty friends with me. Yeah. But then I'm going to have massive mittens, winter mittens on. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to have to be faffing with the glove, going. No, over them. You tell no. me. Tell me. We need to buy some Lucky winter mittens. <laughs> Are they waterproof? Uh, so we do a range of you trail running, running uh, trail yeah. running. Okay, we do right. a full range of trail running gloves. So there's a selection of fingerless running gloves, which for use in summer. And what they do is they spread the load even further over your hands. So you, it, it is unbelievably comfortable. And then they do like lobsters and thermo mitts and all of this kind of stuff. See, I never knew this, James. Come with the little strap on here. So, oh, but I know about the little. They know about the little claw because the yeah. kids wear lecky gloves from when they're born here. Yeah. Because um, then they don't have. They're called dragons in France. They bit the bit uh -huh. the strap, yeah. and then and then every time you get off a chairlift. They have to, you have to wait while they do it for that, you know, yeah. and it's minus 18. Uh, so we always have uh, thrown money at them because they're not cheap at the Lecky Ski Gloves because then they've just got that little bit there and they in clip and yeah. in and out and you're off and they're gone. And they do last. That is what I do love about the Lecky products and um, is that they last and they last. So the kids' gloves, my eldest skied in his Lecky Gloves for three years before they fell apart and considering they ski for 20 plus hours a week i think that's a pretty good um that's pretty good that they've it's survived time, yeah. yeah it's pretty good and they stayed warm that's the biggest thing is that they've stayed warm for three years the, la yeah. the liner on them okay i never knew that about and are there uk stockists for the trail running gloves yes so have a look online you'll be able to find some uk stockists for the, for the trail running gloves um and it is something that is is kind of this hidden secret. It's this little yeah. Thing because I was like, I didn't know about that. Oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I uh, I love. I'll definitely be using the poles for the whole race. They'll be in my hand. But then different pairs of gloves. You know, you you sort of lose the benefit of a glove as soon as you change like. Yeah. Um, just sticking something over it as well. It's the sort of thing that after three or four days could, you know, or I'm just going to end up losing them because I'll be trying to change my glove. The lecky glove will go and I'll be like, oh, I don't know, I lost it somewhere. It's somewhere on Adrian's wall. <laughs> Which wouldn't be ideal. Not when you're feeling like that. <laughs> um, lots of people, I get asked a lot about um, how sizing, what size shall I buy? Because a lot of people... Um, would have been trying to buy Lecky poles, and especially in like the last year with COVID and stuff yeah. online. And I know that Lecky have also had a bit of problems with maybe, like everybody, distribution and trying to find the good stuff. Um, yeah, but I'm here to do my job. <laughs> Yeah, I really sorry about that. But if people are, um, so if people are looking to try out poles, to try out uh, what size works best for them, what is the best bit of advice that you can give them? So. If you ski, it's dead easy um, because you this know, is why I always say to people as well. Oh, what's your ski size? Easy, well? And I know that's not everybody, and I know it's a, a, a very privileged kind of place to be in if you do get to go skiing. So I, I totally understand that. Um, but you're going for pretty much your ski size. The ideal is, as you are stood straight, you want to be able to put the pole next to your foot and have a right angle at your elbow. So that's where your pole should sit. Um, and so for me, that. I'm a five foot six and a half i would say five foot seven but i i so i uh, i have a 115 ski yeah. pole average i'm an average build average lady average pole height but and most... i like the fact you've gone for the pink as well i'm really pleased you've gone for the pink but own it i mean honestly my little girl thinks this is the best ski pole in the world 
Uh, I think yeah. it was probably more that the 115 it's only proper came. pink as well, though, isn't it? It's not proper like... Uh, I tell you what, pink. though. I tell you what. I would have gone... I'd have preferred a sort of sky blue myself. So I know that Nikki <laughs> don't do sky blue. Um, but if you drop your pole in snow, in the dark, in uh, down a cliff, which I've done, um, uh, I've dropped it down crevasses, all sorts, um, you can find it if it's yeah. pink. So yeah. the only thing it needs is a bit of... Um, uh, reflection in light, I'd say, lucky. Yeah, so that if it, running it? in the night, uh, vehicles, anything, if that had a bit of reflection off. I'll, I'll feed that one back. That's a nice Feed that back. And just send me, you send me a couple of pairs. That's fine. I'll take that. <laughs> uh, okay. So if you're looking for the sizes yet, yeah, ski pole or else, what else can people do? So um, there is a size chart online. So if you went onto the uh, Lecky website, you will be able to find a size chart, which gives you pretty much exactly where you need to be. Um, I would I would recommend measuring out from foot to right angle of your hand. Just get yeah. a tape measure, get a stick, measure it out, see, see what that looks like. Um, most shops that do trekking stuff will have a set of trekking poles as well, and those will be adjustable. So you could get an idea of... Um, you know what sort of size you should be at by that but yeah on the whole unless you're doing a vk or um unless you've got a preference which is way out there which some people do some people like a really short foot pole some people like a really long pole the, the standard place to go is a right angle of the elbow it's yeah. a super simple and the nice thing, thing to do yeah the nice thing about the lecky pole is the length of the handle so i use the micro trail um pro yep. uh and the length of the handle with the foot what was cork minus cork is uh is now foam is that you can change your grip for really steep yep. uh or top of the handle if you uh and then you can go right down to lower so it might be a bit different when you're running downhill as well um yeah. that you might be holding your pole a bit lower than you would be at the top on really steep stuff and it because it's got such a long handle you've always got a bit of grip wherever you are and then a nice smooth bit at the top for what I would call sort of your endurance grip at the top where you're going to be holding it for most of the time it's super comfy and it's got a slightly larger grip so your hand can be quite relaxed whereas when it goes a bit narrower down where you might be gripping on more going down the hill <laughs> for a bit more plant-based um can we talk a little bit about it's going off the script a bit Gary but a bit about yeah. how you look after your poles Yes, okay. Because um, I lost a pair of, weren't lucky, I'm really sorry, my first pole, um, my first foray into poles, I, wore, I used a different brand and they died on me because I left them up like that yeah. and they basically couldn't then get them uh, apart. apart. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit, because I think that's the sort of thing as well that people don't know and they might spend a lot of money on a really nice pole and then leave them I would have just left them, oh, I'm putting them down now, you've shamed me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a really good point, because these are these are really expensive pieces of kit. You, you're going to be hard pushed to find a pair of shoes that comes out this expensive, um, or pretty much most of your running kit, really. Um, but they're going to last you. I hope I never have to place. They are going to last. Um, so what we would always recommend is, after pretty much any time you've taken them out, make sure they're folded down afterwards. So, you know, nice and easy to fold down. If it's been a wet, muddy, claggy kind of day out on the hill, we'd get a damp cloth and just wipe the ends that kind of connect the bits together. Never use any grease, never use um, any lubricants, never use anything like that, which does happen. Is that something you've done, Eddie, that face? Well, it's just the button, the, the button at the top gets a bit sticky. Okay. So before a race, I always put a little bit of, um, I put a little bit of WD-40 on the button. Okay. No, I mean, I, it's, yeah, it's probably it's it hurts my thumb to press it. It's probably not going to kill the poles. We, we as a brand say like no lubricants, no grease, nothing like that. And it's only because it just, it makes it a bit too slippy in terms of the, the holding on, you know, if, if stuff's on there, there's a good chance it will slide. Thankfully for the fixed length folding poles, like mostly running poles, it's not as much of an issue. When you start to get into the stuff with a variable length, so you've got the speed locks, we do get these returned to us because people say that they no longer hold and we have a look and they perhaps put some lubricant of some sort on that section to allow it to travel a bit smoother and then they don't understand why it won't grip anymore. So, yeah, we, we, we try to suggest no lubricant where possible. It's, it's, it's as easy as damp cloth, 
clean off all the mud, leave them somewhere, um, leave them somewhere to dry. On the whole, keep them out of the sun, keep them out of the heat. Um, the heat and sun can cause the glues to expand and bits and bobs like that, and that can cause you some issues. Yeah. We get so few of these returned to us. Um, every now and again, they snap because carbon fiber is a performance focused and very lightweight fragile material so there is a chance they'll snap so in terms of looking after them when you're actually out on the hill and this feeds a little bit into pole etiquette which is uh, a really enjoyable thing to talk about <laughs> let's talk about that then sorry what what happens if you the, the the cord down the middle snaps is there a way to, to maintain that so there is and it is send it back to your retailer who then gets in touch with us and we can repair them so we it's, it's a bit like brain surgery actually you have to get a tool right up inside yeah. and take the whole thing apart it is it's tricky to do on the newer models coming in from um it, it should be coming in quite soon really we are going to have a replaceable section so it's going to make it much more replaceable as part of our commitment as part of our commitment to the environment we we always focus on repairing the product if, if something breaks something goes wrong we will do everything we can to repair that product rather than see it end up in landfill um, yeah. and so that's that's a big part of what lecky's done for decades now is always repairing everything and then now can i send those really old cranky stinky ski gloves back from my oldest mother and go look they just didn't last hardly the museum. <laughs> there we go. see what see what's said <laughs> <laughs> the only time my lecky poles have let me down is when i ran through the night with them and it was minus temperatures and they froze and I could not undo them to store them. Yeah. That's the only thing. And I would think, but if people are in that situation where the, oh, I just carried on, I just carried on um, carrying them because there was nothing that I could do. And I guess there's nothing that you can do against that apart from putting them down earlier before they froze. Pick them in your armpit, maybe, you know? Get <laughs> some body heat on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, a tricky one. that's not one i've heard before them freezing together that's uh freezing yeah, together because it was a button actually at the top the button froze <laughs> okay didn't touch it. maybe you don't need to um but maybe it might be something to um yeah but i hadn't thought about putting them under my armpit but i did have to then carry them until i got rid of them for a while but again it's not the end of the world cold conditions is an important one because cold conditions carbon fiber doesn't like so mm. in cold conditions there is uh, more of a chance of them breaking and this is where we can talk about different materials that these running poles come in um, if primarily you are going to be running in cold conditions we would probably recommend you look at something a little bit more durable like an aluminium pole um, okay. it is going to take a bit more of a beating in cold conditions yeah carbon fiber becomes quite brittle in the cold and you yeah. will see that if you catch the bottom section on a rock um, or you drop them or something like that there is more of a chance they'll snap they are very much like a sports car, you know? They are fantastic, they go really fast. But unless you're really looking after them, and unless you are maintaining them and, and taking care, then there's a good chance you can do them some damage. So, yeah. Look after them. I love the maintenance chat. With the shoe, shoe, shoe shows that we had, I think the Innovate guys, I clean my shoes religiously now every time they get dirty now. So anything like that, I love it. And I think as well, if you really love a piece of kit, like my lecky poles, not not just my trail running poles, like they save my bacon almost every long run. And also my ski touring ones. The ski touring ones have a axe basically on the bottom yeah. bit. They have like the spike. It's actually, Gary, you could actually like cut chicken with it. <laughs> uh, it's like so sharp, but they honestly, they save my life in the winter. I'm going up something really icy and scary. Yeah. So I think if a bit of kit, you know a bit of kit, you almost love it like a child. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's some of the feedback we get quite a lot from people who, who use their leckies is they just love them. They just absolutely love them. It's their favorite piece of kit. And it's so rare that anyone's going to lend you their leckies. If they're going to lend you a set of poles, they'll lend you a different set of poles. These the other, never get lent. Ho holding the poles like this as well reminds me that if you're if you're a slightly like, this is becoming like a sales pitch for lecky, it always was going to be if I was involved in it. But... They, when you put them together like that, if you've got a short bit of running, if you're doing um, uh, maybe a trail race where you've got a climb um, and then you're going to do a little bit of running and then a bit more climb, holding them in your hand, they are really, really small. They go down really small. And if you actually hold them at the end, um, it's almost like you haven't got them in your hand, whereas some other brands, they don't, they're a bit more clumpy when you hold them together. 
So that's another really nice thing about Lecky. And because the handle's so long as well, wherever you hold them, you can, you're can you actually holding them on the handle as well. So Gary, if you've got a bit where you're actually going to collapse them, but you don't want to put them in your storage. In the back. What do you have for storage? What, <laughs> no, what's your storage wait. preferences? Oh, yeah, we were going to ask you this. Uh, okay. Depends on the race. Depends I'm on the race. I'm going for a waist belt. That's my, you're after that's the waist my belt. opinion at the moment. Yes. I um if I'm doing like a 30 40k race I will just hold them if I collapse them at all. Okay. Um and not bother if I'm doing something longer I go for the old the old quiver on oh, my back. Right. Okay. I really like that. I find that really easy to get them out. I don't like them around my waist because I worry that I'm going to fall on them on my back. Uh if they're on my back I worry yeah. that when I fall going downhill yeah. I'm going to land on them. Yeah, I can see that. Because some yeah, points, okay. I think in the Lincoln Hundred, where you've got to squeeze through a little gap on a wall. So yeah, maybe I would take them out if they're on my back. If if they're in my waist belt, I'll take them out. I that. just find the quiver like I never have any problem getting them in and out. Whereas with the waist pack, when I get tired or my fingers get cold, you know when your fingers get a bit swollen when you've been running for so long, you lose the dexterity in them. Yeah. Uh, and so I do find the back putting them in the back, and I don't use mine hugely on the downhill racing. For shorter stuff, for longer stuff, Gary, you probably, like for a hundred mile, I keep them out because you're not moving at such speed, are you? Yeah. Going downhill, you just want, you're actually using them to save your knees on the downhill. A little bit of breaking, yeah. A little bit of so, breaking. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a waist belt guy as well. I, I love the waist belt. I love, it, it fits so snugly and they bounce so little. You forget they're there if they're packed away. But actually, when I leave the car, like I'm, I'm the lecky nerd, aren't I? So I leave the car and I've got my lecky poles out and then I don't really put them away. because Yeah, and I say that to people, like if you've got them, use them, yeah. really. Uh, you might as well, you know, just carrying them. Yeah, otherwise uh, it's... Carrying otherwise, an expensive carbon block. Talking about how lightweight they are, if you're just going to carry them, they're actually an addition to the weight you've been taking for your race. 100%, and yeah. Make the most yeah. out of using them when you've got yeah. them. I do often put them away as well, and probably why I don't want a belt as well is if I've got a scrambly climb, I like to have my hands out. And so that's, again, why I like the quiver, because it's quite quick, I find, putting them in uh, a backpack a bit. So if I was just thinking, like, when would I put them away? So if I, I know I've got a bit of hands yeah. either going up or going down, quick, put them away. But apart the terrain is probably the best place to be putting them away. Um, because people, they, But lots of the people I went, race around here, they'll keep them out. And yeah. I'm like, how have you how have you managed to get up that with the poles? Like, I like to be able to feel my death before it <laughs> happens. Let's talk a bit about pole etiquette before we finish off today. Pole etiquette. So pole etiquette is something which uh, people talk about it, but it, maybe not in those terms quite a lot of races. Um, we've all seen the near misses where you are very concerned that someone's eye is going to be dangling off the end of that pole any minute. Um, and if you start with any start. big European races, you know people use them as weapons. It's just terrifying. It's actually terrifying. So, I mean, you can either go out with um, some sort of bulletproof sunglasses on to get you through those first few miles whilst the pack's nice and tight. But we we want people to start um, start just using them sensibly as they're out on the hill. If you're going over a style, especially with the straps, okay, because the straps themselves, as I'm clipped in here, you told me yeah. off on Friday about this. I didn't know. <laughs> That's it. Only because I had just gone through the pole basket thing on that video and you went over a style with them still strapped in. <laughs> so with this, if I'm then trying to go over a style, immediately the pole is flapping around and it's up in the air and it's in people's faces and it's a really dangerous place to have it. If you're going over a style, if you're going through a gate, if you're going over a bridge where there's lots of little gaps in the bridge, you know, and you don't want to damage your pole, unclip. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. Unclip, hold it so that the tip's facing down towards the ground. And as you are folding and unfolding your pole, it's the easiest thing just to fold them so that the tip's facing downwards. You know, you can do it so quickly. It's so efficient because efficiency is, is the key to why these are built the way they're built. So bringing them back out as well, nice and easy to just fold them with the tips facing down towards the ground. If everybody did that, then nobody would be terrified of poles at races. Everyone would just be like, oh, everyone's got poles and they're wonderful with them, you know? Also, if your poles are facing um, 
behind you like um like at some sort of 90 degrees you're not using them properly because all of that energy is going out the back door so if you've ever and you have if you've ever started ccc or UTMB or any of those big races oh, sorry men but you're the worst at this and their poles are flying out the back and you're like almost bashing them down well they're not using their poles right but i know a lot of people as well use their poles at start races maybe i do as well to give themselves a little bit of space almost so it's <laughs> Like a... social distancing sticks they've been really good in COVID. <laughs> yeah. but i like that tip down again there's something i've never even thought of is to take them down with the tip yeah, yeah. and um it's it just it, it's mitigating risk isn't it it just it just helps people out and it's, it's a good so habit to get into yeah it's, it's a really good habit because it, it just it's one of those things if you can practice it that way then you don't have to think about it when you're exhausted at 90 miles you know because that's just the way it happens uh last question from me um asking for a friend who wants to use poles in his first race how long before uh before your race should you start looking at putting pole polling into your um into your training plan how long do you think it takes you to sort of get to grips with um using poles um <laughs> it definitely depends on who it is doesn't it gary um but i would say i would say Probably six weeks is a good place to start. Um, it gives you enough time to be getting out quite a lot and you're still probably doing some slightly longer runs in your training then as well. Um, and it will give you time to do it. I had this conversation with a gentleman who bought some poles um, from me um, back before Christmas and he's training for the Lakeland. Um, I think he's doing the 100. And he's bought them before Christmas so that he could have basically more than six months worth of practice with them. Oh, that and is good. That's that's kind of a nice place to be. Yeah. You know you're going to be efficient. You know you're going to know exactly where your placement is. You're going to have built up that um, muscle base in your upper body as well so that you're going to be getting the most out of them. Um, but as has been evidenced, um, you can pick them up two days before a race and go out and get second oh, place. So. I think Gary, I don't know if you found this, but a lot of the um a lot of the it's not just the polling action, it's also then what you do with the polls when you want to eat, when you want to drink, when you want to get to a checkpoint, yeah. when you want to put your coat on, when you want to take all those little yeah. things um that take a bit of practice and that puts people off using polls because they're like, I couldn't eat because and I'm always like, well, you, you only eat with one hand. Got to practice. You just got to practice, and it's all about pack efficiency as well, about where you're putting stuff in your pack. So if you know, yeah. I'm really left-handed, like I'm so left-handed that I can't do much else with my right hand. So I know that I'm just going to put my poles in my right hand, yeah. and I'm going to have my food where I can reach it in my left hand. Except, but it all takes practice, so that you don't even then. And now I obviously don't have any patience. Anyone says that because I don't even think about it. It just happens, and and it's another great thing about the lecky the trail running poles is that because they're so light and so easy to carry that they they're, they're light and so if you put both of them in one hand it's pretty easy yeah, or even like it. under you know if you're doing a really long race under your under your armpit if you're going into a checkpoint or whatever as um, long as you folded them down first eddie and you're not I stabbing down i wouldn't down. bother with that i just take everyone's eyes out the checkpoint i'm in a race carnage behind me no no that, no <laughs> anyone sees eddie with poles at a race stay clear by the sounds of it that's the thing i've learned from you sticking out i'll put the sharp bits going into the checkpoint just to prop people out the way get me to that tailwind but it is good i, I was looking you know i think i've been super fortunate i never had that was a worry that all of a sudden my shoulders would start screaming my triceps would start screaming and that never happened for me but yeah for somebody else it might be the case and if you literally got them out to you know you've ordered some poles three weeks before a race and then you go out with them and it's like i mean absolutely i've got serious doms on my shoulder then that might put you off from actually using them well, yeah. I tell you what, though, it takes me when I move from skiing to running, and I move from uh, and I put the poles into my running action for the first time. I always get sore kneecaps because I think I I stride up the hill a bit more, and so I think I do a bigger stride with the poles yeah, okay. than I don't. And the same with the going down. I think I go down slightly differently with the poles, and always for the first couple of weeks, my knees are a bit sore. Weird. Probably doing something wrong. You know, if something hurts, there's something wrong, but it goes away. It's an interesting one. It's definitely not what I've heard of before. It's <laughs> well, sore it's kneecaps, but okay. Kneecaps. It's just old age. It's just yeah, old age. As long, I think the advice is as long as as long as possible, really. Uh, six weeks. As long as possible. I mean, the more time you have practicing with them, the better you're going to be. The, the better you're going to feel and the more comfortable it's going to be using it on that race. But th that's you, the same for any piece of kit. If you have access to a gym and you you know, if you live in London, you're like, oh, I don't really want to go polling around Batsy Park. I'm going to look like a right tool. You'll be if one of thousands. 
if you get if you've got access to a gym and there's a ski ergo in the gym the action of pulling down that ski ergo is quite similar and using the same back muscles as um as polling so um yeah if you do like five or ten minutes warm up before you do strength or whatever three or four times a week a couple of times a week just using that will definitely help with the, the other thing to look at in terms of training is nordic walking which is yeah it what gets a bad people rep do, what people do. <laughs> it gets a bad rep but actually in terms of the technique you're going to use over a hundred mile race very few of us are going to run the entirety of a hundred mile race and if you've got really good nordic walking technique i almost guarantee you're going to go quicker than the majority of people yeah. who are trying to jog along with their poles because you can really power through and the, the placement of the poles from that feeds into everything you're going to do in terms of running with poles later on so you know if you can find someone who's going to teach you to nordic walk it's a really good starting point for doing those long races with poles but unfortunately you just get out with them go up and down steps with them go up and down yeah. the canal path like just <laughs> be outside with your poles and get used to that motion and that's going to be the best thing you're going to be able to do 100 percent, i agree with that great advice well, thanks for your time today james but we always end with a quick five questions you've answered one of these but i'll ask it again just to refresh our listeners um all right your favorite lecky pole of choice what would you go out for a run with what would i go out for a run with i'd go out for a run with the uh ultra trail fx1 with trail FX1. beautiful new grip on the top look at that see Eddie, yeah. you're gonna have to get a set of these now you've got to upgrade your ones <laughs> Do you have a favourite pole, North Pole or South Pole? Ooh, South Pole, penguins. Yeah. North Pole, where Father Christmas lives. Oh, no, Lapland. <laughs> Finland. Finland is from Eddie. Got to get that right. <laughs> Not having that. Uh, do you prefer to run uphill or downhill with your poles? With my poles, is that the caveat? Uphill. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Cats or dogs? I know the answer to this. Uh, dogs. dogs yeah of course <laughs> on the podcast otherwise we're going to end on a on a pub quiz style question it's not the kind of pubs i normally frequent would ask this question but do you know and this is opinion actually but it's not necessarily fact i suppose but do you know who the fa most famous polish musician is <laughs> no <laughs> what <laughs> that was an easy question <laughs> most famous polish musician this feels like a joke no, no, it's legit. Yeah, actually, I was quite impressed. Yeah, we were trying to. We did look up most famous Polish person, but we couldn't pronounce their name. So then we. This was yeah. the second most famous. This, was, this person was second on the list, but yeah, Frederick Chopin. Oh, there you go. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. No, I should have got that. What is it? Does he have a statue in every village, or was that the other guy? That was the other guy. Yeah, he had a statue all over the place. You had um, Pope John Paul II. I think he was uh, on the list of top he, ten. I don't kids. think he was a famous musician, though. No, no, but this. No, it's we can. I heard him play guitar the... once. wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah. Cool. That's it for me. Thanks a lot for your time today, James. I really enjoyed Brilliant. that. Thanks um, for having me, guys. Yeah. Hopefully, our listeners are. Uh, Loads of little tips there, maintenance. You should just say as well, we were, I was asking James just before, best place to go and buy Lecky Poles, and the best thing to do is just Google your most local um, distributor um, yeah. and go along to them, and then they can also advise you on sizing and try some out as well. Much better to do that than buy them off at the internet. Well, you can get hold of them. This, when we're talking about what how I'm going to hold my poles, I will be on my third pull belt because of sizing issues on uh, online retailers so yeah if you can physically go and pick them up and plant them on the floor and see if you're making that 90 degrees and not second guessing what internet sizes give you uh that would be great brilliant thanks guys hope you all enjoyed that poll chat lots of polling uh if you use polls yeah we should start a facebook poll ah! <laughs> facebook poll do you use polls um do you want to know an interesting stat on the lecky instagram page six of the top seven finishers at hard rock were using lecky bowls so that says whoa, whoa, whoa. something about the product doesn't it um there's lots of polls on the market i mean i do think that because, as James said, Lecky, they all they working on is poles and the gloves, basically, isn't it? All the money that they get, all they're investing, all that they're looking at is just 
bowling. I wonder, it's curious here, yeah, if, um, so you do have brands like, say, Solomon or Direction and probably a few other brands, they do polls, but I wonder if they, like, say, Harrier too, I wonder if they, like, say, Lecky would do the whole R&D and everything. I wonder if, say, Solomon or, or Ultimate Direction just farm it out to a factory that do polls, then brand it up as <clears throat> as as their product. Um yeah, I don't know. But what I did think was funny is um, Adrian's... <laughs> Gary just said, by the way, when you said Adrian's Wall on the podcast, it sounded like Adrian's Wall, and I felt a bit picked on, frankly. <laughs> it's just my very English accent of Adrian's Wall. Your accent gets picked up by the uh, subtitles on YouTube. Uh, mine is just all over the place. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell was that? But it's mine. Yeah, yeah. English. Oh, yeah, I didn't mean to pick on you. Oh, sorry, I could take it, Gary. Anyway, yeah, give us a shout out. Let us know if you do use polls, if you like polls, your experience of polls. Um, and yeah, hope that was useful in some way to somebody listening. What have we got coming up, Eddie? Well, one of your. I reckon this could be on your bucket list too. The Kennet and Avon Canal Race starts on Friday, 145 miles. Yeah. Well, I wonder if this would be <clears throat> slightly more scenic than the um, GUCR. Yeah, but the, the GUCR has got the, it's the kudos, hasn't it? It's the kind of flagship marquee. I think maybe you should have a season of doing them all, all the canals. I really would. You know, if I never had this kind of V50, trying to do as well as possible as a V50 in the 1800, yeah, I definitely would have a go at the Ghanaian Canal next year. I think it's too, for me and my age and body, it's too close to the late 100s. Um, oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Like what say. else? Yeah, down coast half marathon in the northeast. It's really lovely route, this. You know, years and years ago, the east coast of England with all its mines was not a really scenic bit of coastline with all the... Just lots and lots of coal, but since all, all that industry um, has gone, the, the local coastline's really, really stunning now. It's like lots of nature reserves. And yeah, this one starts at Seam and then runs all the way down to Crimlin and Trail Outlaws. It used to be, I think, a National Trust event, uh, but now Trail Outlaws are managing it. So yeah, that'd be awesome. Hopefully the weather is not too hot. I don't think, I think the forecast is easing a bit, but I think it's funny. As a kid, we'd go holidaying in Crimlin which seemed like another world when I was seven years old. Dead exotic. Dead exotic. It's about six miles away. <laughs> Do you remember the journey? It's a long way away. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite vivid. My auntie had a caravan there, and we just thought she'd, like, secret millionaire or something like that. I was like, made it. But now as a grown-up, it's uh, not as exotic as I remember. But, yeah, best of luck, everybody. So how's your week panning out? What's got what we got coming up? Right. Okay. Well, I've got get my head around the chart, the children's activities. I've got this is just I've got one just just come back. Listen to what he did. He did um so it's ski training, but physique, ski physique. So they did took their mountain bikes down to the um Ardesh, 45 degrees. So oh, it was so funny hearing all these weather reports and and my I'd let my 11 year old child go off. He was cycling between 30 and 45 K a day on a mountain bike on wow. rocky tracks in 45 degrees plus camping so he's just sleeping in a tent no he said mum you I didn't take a chair I just had to sit on the dirt for the whole week <laughs> um so we had I had a few little um yeah it was really really hard really really hot hot like he's literally come back a scrap it as I call him shadow <laughs> himself after four days he was like we're gonna go kayaking we're not biking today we're doing kayaking I was like don't need to worry about that day okay great have a great time seven hours of kayaking oh it, my goodness seven hours they kayaked all the way down so they drove them up basically up the river and they kayaked all the way back down to his camping That's anyway hardcore hardcore when you're 11 uh and then yesterday i thought he was coming home in the afternoon he was like bike you know mom i've done it and then they took them on a little sneaky 30k bike ride in the morning but the heart so it's like did it he was great M amazing um imagine uh, if they did that the grown-ups it'd just be like a lot of pity pies and be like, no way. cross on for breakfast and off you go for your 40k bike ride that's it no snack nothing um and but he came back what was the highlight of the trip what was it he's done all that he's, he's looked he's only 11 looked after himself they had to cook their own food in the evening that'll be my highlight we uh we stopped at mcdonald's on the way back and I oh. was, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that you know I, but it is good in a way that it's so not their norm 
that that is such a treat in what a, what a amazing like to go through that we were like could we at 11 well i was at ballet school when i was at 11 so they were breaking our toes every saturday morning to try and get them to bend more so it was i was pretty hardcore by 11 but um so yeah he's got a rest day today back on it again tomorrow but i'm got i'm working out the juggle they've all got all this ski training one's got ice dancing training now starting one's got football training just can they all do it at the same time busy busy but i'm gonna carry on i'm setting myself in my diary i'm writing just little goals that are very low i said this to her mum the other day we well, were having our chat about her training i was like just set the bar quite low and you're going to achieve and you'll feel better than setting yourself that four hour run that you know is going to be a stretch to do and you're probably going to do two and a half hours and have to stop and then you'll feel yeah. that you haven't done it but if you just set it low you're going to achieve if you've got a bit more energy you can always do a little bit more i am struggling to get to the gym to the big weights gary and I love my big weights, but it's an hour that I don't have when I need childcare. I'm contemplating yeah. going on decathlon and buying a bench with some weights. A bench to get hench. A bench. Oh, I can't get much more hench, Gary. You've hench, seen yeah. it. You've hench, seen yeah. drums. <laughs> hench. Yeah. Hench. I have seen your uh, shoulders. They're quite impressive. Uh, they are. Good. It's all that polling. Um, what do you reckon? What do you, I've had the okay from the old... <laughs> The old, what do you call what's, what's, what's um because it's not ball and chain is it what's the husband in cockney slang oh yeah i don't know actually yeah i'd probably use it as well well you yeah. use it if you're going to use it yeah and Bryn will use it so oh, oh yeah i would use it but it's a bit it's quite large isn't it poor delivery to get the good bench yeah you need you can't just go to argos and get a 30 quid one because that is just a close horse it's not going to work you need a no, but you need weights. You know, I, there's no, I, there's no point me doing uh, endless band work. I need weights. I'm that age and that strength that I need. I need to be squatting and yeah. I'm be missing it. Um, so I will get down to the gym, but really, it's weekend, weekend job that in it. So just carry on as we are. Juggle, struggle, juggle. You've got, you really are into taper, taper madness now. Well, I'm, you, you were talking about weights. I am still doing my strength and conditioning, but this last two weeks, it, I'm moving it more to body weight as opposed to weight weight. So I'm still still doing the movements, and I may even, um, because the last few weeks I've been pretty smashing the strength and conditioning, so I may drop a couple of sessions and do more mobility work. I'm working on a massage gun still, and that is keeping the knee at bay, which is great. Oh, it is to love. Yeah. I mean, it's an investment, but it is just... That heady sound. I sat there gathering dust for maybe six months. And then I think it was, it could have been Brody Sharp's podcast just alluded to maybe it's, I think one of the guests he had on, it was knee pain and maybe IT band. And um, I think there's a few things going on, but yeah, definitely some relief on that. But yeah, the session. I mean, it's an expensive product, but it can do your IT band and it can do that bit in your soleus in behind your calf like sort of like that high okay. point right yeah. whereas like where i always get oh, when the massage lady sticks her elbow in it those two bits for me i mean you can just sit and watch world champs athletics i don't think well, mine's a super duper fancy one i think i googled top 10 massage guns and yeah I don't know what about 100 pound it was and it does it's fine it's, it's it doesn't need to do anything apart from just vibrate does it yeah that was great it's great it really mine has got one. different heads Yes, yes. It's yours. But I don't like anyone apart from the big... Yeah, yeah. I literally, that's the only one I use. <laughs> I tried the little pointy one. It was too intense, Harry. It was too intense. We're talking about Theraguns. Theraguns. Right. What else? You've got some sessions? Yeah, five times three minutes. So that is a big um, drop because the six times kilometre in the Dean, your minute, your miles would vary from, say, maybe, I don't know, say 350 to a five and a half minute mile, depending on the section of the Dean. So it's good to get back to times. Um, and five threes, and I think there's two minutes rest. So that is a big drop in, um, and it's about 15 minutes of effort. So that's a big drop. And uh, it, bizarrely, it said a 30 minute threshold run, but I think I might only do a 20 minute. I might head off to a park run again uh, and do that. I really do. And because this weekend also should be a say, half marathon run, 13 miles. Um, and I do fancy going back up the lakes, but I've got so much on my plate. I'm not too sure if I we'll manage that but then on the sunday with the down course half marathon i'm either going to go and just spectate offer my services as a marshal or i might go and film it and um 
do a bit of a school deer with the cameras and trying to fly the drone into the sea or anybody else that would be <laughs> that's a success if, if oh I get don't find anyone's head it's the lawsuit that could then follow yeah that's quite yeah. Um, yeah, we've really struggled to find podcast recording time to do then <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that would be quite a stressful thing so yeah I'm, 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 one of those three things will happen on the sunday and then now i'm just getting the kit together i'm pretty much there with shoes i'd let shoe change a bit more comfort over lightness well i'm probably going to use the the kinabalu twos the scott the kinabalu twos they've got an extra few uh, about five mil extra cushioning um i was going to go for the scott the super track rcs they're, they're quite they're light racing shoe they've got a, quite a good grip on them but yeah i like those i run in those a lot but for 100 miles they're a bit more of a race fit there's more room in the toe box for the kinabalu so they might and i wait, i've weighed them both like a right side case and i'm only about 20 30 grams per shoe so that's not the end of the world um so i'm going to go with that i've lost annoyingly i've lost my i had a, a top that i bought from scott and they i've lost it so that's gone so i can't wear that anymore so it's pretty i'm going to look like a scott. As an adult when you lose stuff because you're like i don't, I don't lose know where it's gone. I know, well, where have you taken your top off gary and left it, Is it, well, down it to- <laughs> it would probably just fall on the floor when I've been parked up after a run or a race or something. That's probably where it is. I'm hoping that it's been popped in one of the kids' drawers when the clothes yeah, have been that's away. Yeah, that's Especially if it's a darker colour. Yeah, yeah. A classic. So currently, um, it's not going to be this top I was hoping it would be. But yeah, I'm going to look like a spot, a spot, a Scott sponsored athlete, which yeah, is not the case. Yeah, you like, ooh, <laughs> passing a sponsored athlete. <laughs> yeah, you keep passing. Points that but yeah, getting the kid together, starting to do all that kind of stuff. And other than that, yeah, it's pretty nice. About 50 something miles for the week, uh, 54 miles. So that's good. And 60 odd miles last week. So yeah, definitely on yeah. the right. Yeah, it's a great time, isn't it? You're saying you've got so much more time. It's awesome. You no, know, so much more time. Don't really feel much better though, normally, me and Tape a week. <laughs> like, why do I feel? How do I normally do more than this? I'm tired. Well, I'm doubling up because I'm not running wrecks. So I'm walking more. So normally yeah, wrecks would run with a bit of work. But- it's super Seems. hot so he's going to get a couple of miles after this podcast and then i'll jog to work after that but yeah yeah it's nice nice times competition well there's no other theme that we could have we've been in a competition for ages have we um there's no other theme that we could have apart from it's hot it's hot it's getting hot in here oh, i won't carry on with that song that's going places we shouldn't be going <laughs> <laughs> we want to see your pictures of either running in the heat wave or cooling off. Really, we want to see uh, how you cooled off. Doggies cooling off, though, they're like, going to get loads of stars, aren't they? Uh, cooling off pics, uh, or maybe like an amazing the sun. Um, for those, lots of people I saw getting up early to go and do their runs. Um, so I'll po- pop a post on Facebook. You go over there, pop your picture up, maybe a little explanation of the picture if you want to. If not, let the picture speak for itself. And you can be in the chance to win a box, box or two of Chewick Cheer Charge goodies. Uh, competition closes on the 3rd of August. I'm a bit confused with this one actually. It's a one star, but I'll I'll start reading it. So I think I'm hoping that was just a little bit of admin error that um he or she did when they did the review. But yeah, ripper time. Surely, yeah, surely it must be an admin error. Why would anyone? <clears throat> yeah, you don't well, catch up on it. Why reading a one star review? This is terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, Ripper Time on the 3rd of the 7th, 2022, left the review. Only came across this post pandemic, but I'm catching up on all the 120 episodes. Oh, well, definitely it's a mistake. Gary Thwaites, ultra athlete, uh, Sedgefield Harrier. Oh, um, no, no, Gary, read it again. Oh, so did nice. I make a mistake? Sorry, typo. Edwina, ultra athlete, coach, living in France, and Gary, Sedgefield Harrier runner. I'm not. I don't know if I'm That's it. <laughs> It's just I, mean, I know I came second at the uh, St. Cuthbert's Way Ultra. Maybe not, because he's catching up on the episode. So maybe you are just a Sedgefield Harry in the early days. Yeah, and he doesn't is. realize where this <laughs> brain's going, where your incredible second yeah. place, Cuthbert's 45 miler, <laughs> and perhaps you haven't seen the trophy cabinet that is growing behind you. It's funny. Uh... You worry. <laughs> anyway. We have a lively chat before interviewing a guest. It's always interesting. We do have a good chemistry and cover all manner of running topics, inviting guests from many ultra feats, such as Bob Graham completions, uh, spine cup champions, to sports scientists and shoe expert. Eddie is particularly sharp in her observations. 
there's nothing about me there either. Uh, but they complement each other so well. You clawed it back at the end there. Yes, yes. Look what I mean by particularly sharp in her observations. Should I be complimented or should I be? I think you're astute. I think that's good. And you're witty and sharp. Or yeah. do you think slightly rude? <laughs> <laughs> I'd always take the positive. <laughs> I'd take the positives. Anyway, we only gave up one star, but we still love the comments. We love yeah. all the comments, but nothing mean because we can't. We're both a little bit highly emotional. And we I'm very sensitive, actually. Yeah, Gary. <laughs> uh, yeah, to be fair, let's be fair. Uh, Gary sensitive. Uh, looking <laughs> that was episode ninety nine. Do you like a ninety nine, Gary? I love a ninety nine. 99. Would you go? Is the night the ninety nine? It means it's got the flake. That's what makes flake. it. Flake. That's it, isn't it? Really crappy processed ice cream. Oh, I love a Mister Whippy. Like, a Mister. What's your favourite ice cream? Vanilla. Super simple. Standard. Just standard. What about you? Well, I do. Yeah, I love vanilla. I like a mint chop chip, and I had like a. It was a Mars bar. No, sorry, a Snickers ice cream. Oh no, no, no! I don't like. I don't. Wouldn't have anything from the from that. The I like freezer. the pistachio ice cream. Yeah. I like if, if it's not fresh. I'm not. I'm not I'm so not keen when the colours start going like if it's like a bubble gum and it's blue. I'm not. I don't want to go down that street. No, that's why you just. Tiramisu say. sounds nice. Tiramisu ice cream that'd be good. Oh, we can't. We're not going for an ice cream together. At least you won't <laughs> eat any of mine if you're just getting. I won't steal it. You know, I love George. We've got an ice cream chat. George is such a messy eater. I do the dad tidying up of the ice cream. Oh, like, Roy, the same all round. <laughs> Like, and then I'm like, there's a bit, oh, I don't know. Nah, I don't really know. I get like about two ice, I get an ice cream and a half out of it with all my tidying up of George's ice cream. It's great. This is, this is how far all my kids have gone the last week when we've just been kind of like, chill, it's been, you know, chilling by the lakes and stuff. Evie had a chocolate ice cream. We have had an ice cream a day during the summer because, you know, what was yeah. life without ice cream? She got chocolate like up her cheek. The day later, it's still there. Brilliant. <laughs> 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 anyway that was episode 99 thanks for listening everyone and thank you to cheer charge for continuing to support the show sending bars to guests future and past competition winners keeping gary and i fueled in all our adventures especially upcoming races uh and generally being an all-round super support to everybody out on the trails i'm eddie sutton and i'm gary Twaits. and let's run to the hills mm -hmm.